Welcome to my video all about dragos. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Caleb Simpson, and you're watching my walkthrough for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for Nintendo Wii U and Switch. As the intro implied, this video is going to be all about how to hunt dragons in order to get their parts. Now, dragon parts can be either sold for tons of rupees, or you can use them to craft some of the best food buffs in the entire game, or we can also use it to upgrade some of our armors which require those pieces. So, this video is going to be all about how to hunt down the three different dragons, um, Farosh, Dinral, and Nadra, and the best places to do so, and you can also farm them repeatedly in order to get about tons and tons of parts that you can use for those three purposes. So that's what this video is going to be all about. We're starting off with Farash, which is the easiest one. This is located at Riola Spring in Farron. And to get there, you can go to the Shota Sa Shrine is the easiest way to do this, and I unlocked that in the previous video, so you can refer to that if you want to see how to get here. Uh, but the easiest way to get up here is to use the Zora Armor to swim with the waterfall. You can get to Riola Spring really easily if you just warp to that shrine. Otherwise, you can climb up nearby, you can go to Farron Tower or something, or you can go to Dueling Peaks and then work your way south. That's a little more time consuming, but that would work if you don't have uh, Farron like, totally unlocked yet, or you don't have a good way to get here and it's raining all the time, and or you don't have the Zora armor, so it's kind of hard to get to Riola Spring. So those would be options for you. What you want to do is once you get to Riola Spring, you want to go to the cave just to the north, and there's a bunch of electric keys here, so kill them if you wish just to get them out of the way. And then what you want to do is toss down some wood and use a fire weapon to change the time of day. The next thing we're going to want is a bunch of arrows and a good bow. Now, as far as a bow goes, all we're really looking for is just something that we can shoot very accurately. So I'd recommend a sniper bow, which have, has increased range. And the best one to get for that is going to be a swallow bow. So those are really easy to get. They don't do very much damage, but it's completely irrelevant for this, so it doesn't matter. So the best place to get a swallow bow is going to be at the Shaw Warbo Shrine, which is in near Rito Village, and just north of that is the shooting range. Now, in the shooting range, there is a little hut there, and against the wall inside is a swallow bow that reappears every blood moon. So, if you go there just over the course of the game, you just keep returning there and keep collecting swallow bows, then we can use the durability of multiple bows in order to hunt dragons and get tons of parts in one sitting. So, you want to place a campfire here, set it on fire, make sure it's under the overhang so the rain doesn't put it out, like it's raining right now, and then as soon as the day starts, you want to light it back on fire, you want to jump into the air once the air geyser starts, and then while in midair, you can use your bow to shoot at the dragon. As long as you aim well, you should be able to break off a part. Ideally, you aim at the horn, is what we're trying to aim for, and then that will land on the ground. Now, as long as you change the time of day to morning again fast enough, then Farash will reappear again. And you can just keep doing this over and over again. Now, my experience has been that if you travel too far away, then when you come back to the campfire, and it's taken too long. If you're taking too long, then Farash will not reappear. So, in my experience, what you want to do is you would just want to keep doing this over and over again and do not move. This both makes it more efficient because we're not wasting our time, but also it guarantees that Farash doesn't like bug out and stop working. So there are several different parts you can get from dragons. You can get um, scales, fangs, claws, and horns, and they all are do different things, uh, but basically they're just different values. The one that's worth the most by far is definitely the horn. So you want to collect horns is what you want. So as far as where you want to aim, you want to aim just a little bit above Farash. Just do bear in mind that he does kind of sway back and forth a little bit, so you do need to account for that. You'll get a feel for it after he's done it several times, though. As a comment, though, we do want one Farash scale, and that is because we were going to use it to access the Spring of Courage. So just make sure you grab at least one of those You'll probably get one on accident at some point, but just hang on to one of them. Just so you know, the soonest point that you can use the campfire to refresh it is just after the part breaks off the dragon. So if you shoot the dragon and then it has like a, a glowy spot and then it will it glows for a moment and then finally it flashes and breaks off the dragon and starts flying through the air. So that's the point when you can turn to the campfire and use it uh, while it's still flying through the air it will still be in midair as you change the time of day. So that will still be fine. So if you keep doing that, that would be the soonest time you can do it, which takes about 20 seconds in my experience. So if you're doing it every 20 seconds, then what happens is then you're making, you're getting a horn every 20 seconds. And when you sell those, they sell for uh, the horns, that is, they sell for 300 rupees, which means you're making about 15 rupees per second, which is really fast. It's the fastest way to make rupees in Breath of the Wild legit. Anyway, you get the idea. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to fast forward through the rest of this. You don't need to sit through. You understand what's happening. So uh, that all being said, I have listed on screen some of the bigger ticket purchases that you can make in this game. Now, assuming that you actually like aim really well and you're using the campfire as soon as possible, you would take roughly like 135 horns to get all the rupees you need to purchase all the bigger ticket items in the entire game, which takes about 45 minutes, assuming you're doing it perfectly. Now, I think it's unlikely that everybody's doing it perfectly, um, so it's probably going to take you much longer than that. Also, this is also, you know, limited, of course, by the fact of just how accurate you are, um, how much durability you have in your bows, and of course, how much patience you have. So I usually come back here repeatedly and do it several different times throughout my 
my gameplay because I just can't stand to sit here for too long because I just get bored out of my mind. But anyways, you get the idea. This is the fastest way to make rupees in the entire game. Now, as a quick note about the cost of things on screen, this is not taking into account everything we've purchased so far and also all the things that I'm not planning on purchasing. Like, I don't think that the Hylian set and Soldier set are worth it at all. I think they're complete garbage. So I would highly recommend you don't buy those um, unless you just want them to look cool, I guess. But um, anyways, so you don't have to buy all these sets, and I'll talk more about them later on and which ones are worth it, which ones aren't. I don't really want to go into detail with that in this particular video. I'm just commenting on it as an option. So, that's the cost of all the things. It's up to you to decide how much time you want to spend here, how much money you want to make, etc. Now, once you have finally killed Farosh enough times, then go ahead and run forward and collect all the goodies. Usually, it's, there's a whole bunch on the right and a whole bunch on the left. So, just run around and collect all that stuff, and you should get tons and tons of horns. So it's up to you to decide which um, armor pieces you want to upgrade using your dragon parts. In particular, horns is what you need for most of the things. I would say that the champion's tunic is probably overall the most worthwhile. And then, just as a quick side note, you do need scales to upgrade the snow boots, as well as access the shrines of wisdom, power, and courage. Uh, so nature scales, you need a couple extra, but the other ones, you just need one of each. So anyways, when you're selling your dragon parts, just you might want to hang on to a scale so that you can use it to access the shrines, which I will be showing at the end of this video. Cooking with dragon horns in particular will give you a guaranteed bonus and it will also increase the duration of the buff to 30 minutes which is the highest you can get in the entire game super awesome so if you mix them with especially higher tier tier 3 ingredients you can get some really good buffs that last for a very long time so save as many horns as you want for that but otherwise you can sell all your dragon parts in general assuming that you have accounted for all the ones that you want to save or you're planning on going back to go farm for more so you can sell a bunch of dragon parts in order to make a bunch of money for those of you following along with the walkthrough just a quick side note i am handing in my spirit orbs to get some heart containers real quick so again Again, of all the dragons, it's definitely the easiest to farm Farash. You can definitely do that the fastest and easiest. So you can make, if you're trying to sell parts to make a bunch of money, or you're going to fry them all up to make some really awesome dishes, then I would highly recommend that you use Farash horns. Now, as far as the other dragons, the reason you'd want to farm them is just to get the parts you need to upgrade your armor and also to get the scales so that you can access the Spring of Power and the Spring of Wisdom. So next, I'm going to show you some farming locations for Dinral, and the best place to get that one by far is to Bantha Great Bridge. So you want to warp over to the Shaloya Shrine. You can enter the to Bantha Bridge stable if you want, and you can use a campfire in there to change the time of day in case it's raining. But otherwise, I'd recommend you just throw down some wood in the middle of the bridge here, um, and it's pretty easy. Or you can use it underneath the bridge on either the left or right side. There's actually a little, like, cliff area just underneath the bridge where you can throw down campfires as well. And that's actually kind of nice because then you can just keep using your campfire, and even if it does rain, it's it doesn't matter and you don't have to go farther away. So whatever you want to do there. So once you have determined your campfire location of choice, you want to simply light it on fire with a fire weapon and then change the time of day to noon and then to morning. Now for Farosh, you can get away with just keep doing morning over and over again. I think it's because Farosh isn't completely spawned. He's not completely out of the pool yet. And so thus going to morning again, it's, it's fine and it resets it. However, for all the other dragons, if they're fully spawned like that, it needs to be a full 24 hours later. So the funny thing is by just doing morning again, it doesn't count it as 24 hours, but meanwhile, if you go to noon first, then it guarantees that the game accepts it as a full 24 hours have passed. So I think that's the reasoning why. So anyways, use a campfire, noon, morning, boom, this will make the dragon spawn. So Dinral will spawn just around the corner in the canyon to the north, and he'll steadily work his way south. And this is pretty easy. Um, all you have to do to, you can just shoot from here while standing on top of the bridge. It's pretty easy. However, slowing down time is a little bit nicer. To do so, all you have to do is just hop off the bridge. Now you can do that here in the middle, so you're really close to him. This is a little bit scary because he's got a lot of flames going around his body and stuff, so that can hit you, so it is a little bit more risky, uh, but it makes it very easy to hit the horns. Now, alternatively, if you're going to go somewhere else, I'd recommend either going off to the right and then hanging on the right side of the canyon. You can jump down to some of those cliffs, like, from above. Otherwise, another thing you can do is just on the left and right side of the bridge itself, there's, like, a little bit of a cliff, like, just below the bridge, right there. So if you jump off the bridge on either the left or the right side, then what happens is because there's a cliff just underneath it, you quickly shoot at Dinral, and then you land on the cliff right below the bridge. And so then you can just climb right back up and you're good to go. So you don't fall all the way down. So if you're planning on just causing him to spawn repeatedly really fast, like in quick succession, then that would make more sense. If instead, I think overall it's probably smarter to cause the part to spawn and go grab it immediately because, and then just climb up or you can warp away and then go back to the bridge because we can just force him to spawn by going new morning anyways, regardless. So even if it does mess up and you're like switching it to morning over and over again, and it's not working go noon morning, and you will force Dinral to spawn. And again, as a reminder, the goal of fighting these dragons is not to make money, it's just to get the parts that we need to upgrade our armor and also to access the spring. So what we're looking for is three shards of Dinral horn and one uh, scale. The scale is 
is received by attacking the body, by the way. I didn't really have time to talk about this earlier. Maybe I'll put a note on the screen later. But um, there, when you attack a dragon, you can only get one part. So if you miss or you hit somewhere else, whatever, that's it. That's it for that particular day. So you have to change the time of day in order to try again. By the way, another quick tip for you, too. Instead of warping to the Shea Loya Shrine, you can just warp to a travel medallion that you place in the middle of the bridge if you have the DLC. And that would be super nice. It would save you a little bit of travel time. It's not like a super big deal. But if you're going to hang out here for a while, I would recommend that because that would be kind of nice. So real quick before we move on, I do want to mention one other possible farming location for Dinral, and that is over here at the Elden Great Skeleton. The easiest way to get there is to go to Gut Check Rock and then go west along Elden's flank downhill. You should get all of the Luminous Stone along the way. I got a couple of Koroks as long as I was in the area. And then the Great Skeleton too, by the way, you should totally take a picture of it while you're here because that's part of a side quest later on. So just take a really nice picture of it and you're good to go. Now, this location, what happens is if you use a campfire here, then then Dinral will then appear out of the sky, kind of like right around there, and it comes really high up and slowly comes down. Now, in my experience, the best thing to do is like hop off of one of these little ledges and then use that to get bullet time so you can shoot at the horn pretty well. This location is okay. It takes a long time for... Um, didn't roll to get here and also it tends to glitch out um, but again though if you use if you use a campfire to go to noon and then morning it will force them to spawn now this location i don't think is anywhere near as good it takes a little bit longer it's definitely harder to travel here there's not really super any goodies here there's like a great flame blade that people like to talk about here but i think it's honestly not a very good location there's way better places that where we can get elemental weapons so you can come here if you want to i think that the bridge is a way better place so next up we have Nadra, but there's a little bit of preparation that we need to do first. Now optionally, you can get the Shrine Quest for the Spring of Wisdom, which is where you're going to find Nadra the first time. So, what you want to do is go speak with Meta here and Tino if you would like to get this quest. And he is found on his farm to the north side of um, Hatino. Now, this is where he is most of the time. If it's raining pretty heavily, he may be checking on the water irrigation nearby, but otherwise, during the day from like 5 a.m. all the way until like 9 p.m., he is out here working in the farm. Otherwise, any other time of day, he's going to be inside his house, which is to the south, and he'll be just sleeping in a chair. So if you've been following along with me for this video, I did get a bunch of Farosh horns earlier, or shards of Farosh horns, and I sold a bunch of them for rupees. So next I'm going to go over to Rito Village and purchase the Snow Quill set for 2,150 rupees, which is not really that bad at this point. We can finally afford it. So grab that. If you haven't done that already, I'd be one of the armors I would recommend. It's more useful than the bow set by far. And it has like a really good buff actually at two stars, which is super sweet. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Anyways, it does offer cold resistance, which is a nice thing anyways. You can survive with just like a single cold resistance and then wearing a fire weapon for the whole game. And that's okay. However, the, this just is a little bit more versatile. Also, upgrading it is really easy. All the ingredients are very easy to come by, or at least for the first three tiers anyways. And I'm going to get you all the way to tier three right now. I love this, like now that we have all these farming locations, it's like so easy to get all this stuff. So Sun Shrooms, the, there's two good places for that. There is Retsum Forest, which is just north of Hatino Research Lab. So you can just hop down there, it's great. You can get a whole bunch of them. Next is near Gut Check Rock, which is at the Gore Tor Shrine at the very top, just north of the Elton Volcano. And that's a great spot too. The, just to the right of the shrine, there's a bunch of Sun Shrooms there. So that should easily take care of the 15 you need. As far as fire keys wings, I think the two best places as far as easy to get right away, where there's a bunch of them, is just to the right of the Elden Tower. There is like this little, just after that Guardian Stalker, there's this little cave that kind of winds up as it follows the road. And there's a bunch of fire keys in there. Very easy to kill, just mm. use a blizzard rod. You can just swipe them and it instantly kills all of them, poof, and you get a whole bunch of fire keys wings. So that should be like half the ones you need. Now, the other ones you can get are actually just like southwest of the Elden Tower itself. It's hard to explain. There's like a cliff there that's pretty steep, and there's actually two of them. There's one just south of the tower and one southwest of it, and there's a bunch of fire keys and red shoes mm. that are there, like tons of them. And I think that's one of the nicest places, because it's so close to the shrine, or so close to the tower, you can warp there super fast. There's a ton of them. It's great. So you can get a bunch of the fire keys wings that you need. Now, unfortunately, when you attack them there, it's a little bit awkward because of the angle and stuff mm. like that, because it's really steep. However, I use a blizzard rod again. You can kill them all. Try to like line yourself so that they're horizontally on the same level as you. Anyways, kill them all. All their parts will drop so the chew jelly and the keys wings will fall down the hill. You can try and grab it before it falls down into the hot water down below. But anyways, that gives you a whole bunch of them and it's great. So you can actually like, what I recommend you actually do is warp to that tower and then go to the bottom and then climb up would be the easier way to make sure you can pick them up as they're rolling down the hill. Now, warm safflinas are relatively common, but they're often not found in large quantities. And in my opinion, the best place to just get a few, we don't even need that many, is to go to the great fairy fountain that's in the far bottom left corner of the map. There are four of them here. So if you've gotten a couple throughout your travels and you just get half of them that you need 
right now is just you're done poof easy so that would be the easiest ones to get as far as a couple additional ones too you can get uh, there's some that are just north of Grudo Town at the like ice house is a nice place you can get some or like the, all those ruins just north of Gerudo Town is like pretty good spot to get them. There's a bunch of um, Lizalfos around there that are kind of scary though. Anyways, um, now back at the Great Fairy Fountain, like I was saying, you should go ahead and grab the Endure Carrots as long as we're here. And now that we have rupees, we can finally unlock this one as well. You should have more than enough rupees to unlock three Great Fairies if you haven't done so already, which will allow us to upgrade the Snowquill armor to rank three. The last ingredient we need is red chew jelly. Super easy to get. I talked about this earlier in the walkthrough. You can actually change any color of chew jelly into any other elemental color very easily. You can either use environmental effects, such as tossing the chew jelly down in a hot area, such as Goron City, and poof, it instantly turns into red chew jelly. You can throw it into a fire. So if you lay down a fire and light it with a fire weapon, then throw the chew jelly on top of the fire, then it will poof, instantly turn into red chew jelly. You just run over the fire and just mash the A button and suck it all up and you're good to go. Um, another option too is you can swing a fire weapon while over top of it. So like while standing on top of the chew jelly, you swing over it. The goal is to not actually hit the jelly, otherwise it'll disappear. But if you just swing near it, then it will change the element, which is kind of weird. So you can do that with any element, by the way. So fire is really easy to get. It's actually the easiest one to make. And I think campfires are probably overall the easiest way to do it. The problem with splashing it with a weapon is it's, it's kind of hard to not break them. So next I'm warping on over to Mount Laneru. I already have the Tano Oa Shrine, and, which I got earlier for getting the climbing boots. And now that I have the snow quill set, I can use that to have a chill resistance, which is really awesome. In fact, now that it's like one of my highest upgraded armors, which is awesome. Now, if you don't have access to this shrine, you just want to go to Hatino Village and then work your way north and then just use some chill resistance. If you don't have the snow quill set, you can just use some chill resistant um, food. So just like some sun shrooms, for example, fry those up and you're good to go. But yeah, the Snow Quill armor, when you have it upgraded to rank 2, if you're wearing the entire set anyways, it will then make give you the unfreezable buff, which makes it so that all these icy attacks up here cannot hurt you at all. You're completely impervious to it, which is awesome. So these guys are not a threat. You can just run through with a fire weapon and one-shot them all. It's great on these icy enemies. So kill the icy keys and take their wings, which is we're going to need for some of our climbing gear upgrades in particular. You want to kill the icy Lizalfos and get all their icy tails, so just go out of your way to grab them if you see them along your path. Kill all of the wolves and grab their gourmet meat, which is awesome. The enemy that's not worth our time up here is actually the white chews. They give you white chew jelly, but as I explained a little bit ago, that doesn't matter because we can make elemental chew jelly whenever we want. A lot of the chews up here only drop like one or two chew jelly a piece, which is not all that much. Meanwhile, a lot of regular chews in other places of the game drop like five. So if you fight big chews elsewhere, you can get like 15 or more from one single enemy encounter. It's just so many. Meanwhile, up here, you're struggling just to get a few. It's just not worth our time. They're a complete waste of time. Just run past them. So once you finally reach the top of Mount Laneru, you can enjoy the cinematic in which we see the goddess statue talking to us about the state that Nadra is in. So once the cinematic is complete, we need to figure out the boss's weak point. Really difficult, I know. I have no idea. It's not obvious enough. So you want to hit the Eye of Sauron that is on the boss's head. So the one on the right, if that's the one you want to shoot, do not shoot the one on the left. Now the reason for this is because how this battle works is that the is that Nadra will fly around typically in circles, so just kind of patrol in an area. And then if you shoot the head first, then what happens is the other eyes will follow directly afterwards. So because you shot the head first, you just kind of aim the general or like go towards the direction where the head just passed by. And then the other eyes will follow after in just a little bit. So it, it makes it really easy to anticipate where the eyes are going to be, so where the boss's weak points are. So as a result, I highly recommend you shoot the head. Ironically enough, at the very beginning, what they offer you is like the head and the tail are the two easiest ones to shoot uh, when he's just still attached to Mount Laneru. So you want to hit the head first would be my recommendation. So next what you want to do is how this works is that Nadra is going to fly to a new position and then she, she, is going to be patrolling around in a circle. And so you want to, uh, in, in that new location, once the patrol pattern is set up, then the eyes will become vulnerable again. 
So the first place is just attached to Mount Lanayru itself. The second location is just above Mount Lanayru. So what you can do is you can shoot it from below. It is kind of far away and it's hard to shoot. Um, what I'd recommend you do is get on top of Mount Lanayru or at least stand on one of the crystals nearby. Sometimes Nejra, I think, can even fly through the very, very tip of the mountain. So if you go to the highest point, you can actually get knocked off. So instead, just be pretty close to that. And what I'd recommend you do is try to shoot at the eyes that are towards the front. So shoot the head and then shoot the second part of the body. Just try and work your way backwards and this will be the easiest way to uh, be able to hit all the eyes. Uh, the first couple patrol patterns are the easiest ones to do. After that it gets more difficult. So like I was explaining a little bit ago, the eyes are only vulnerable once the boss is in its new patrol pattern. So after you shot it at the top of Mount Lanayru, it will now move down to Midorna Mountain to the south. So this is pretty easy. It also is a little bit lower in elevation, which is nice. But something else they do to make this a little bit nicer is as the boss is traveling to its new location, it will then leave a trail of air geysers. So you can use this to gain elevation if you want to. Doesn't matter too much, um, but it is a handy thing as long as we're passing by. So this location is Medorna Mountain, and then Nature will just make kind of figure eight patterns around here. So once you shoot the next eyeball, again, I would recommend you work your way from the head, working your way backwards. Then it will then move on towards the final location, which is down in Nature Snowfields. Now, you can use the nearby mountains to land on them, so I would recommend you kind of work your way towards the hills in general, so that you can have some place to land to regenerate your stamina. For this last section, I'd recommend you land on one of the hills just above Nature Snowfields, and wait until Nature is like moving around um, and the eye is open. So once you see that the eye is open, you can go ahead and make a run for it and then just shoot at the remaining eye using bullet time. It's pretty easy, so just get as close as you want. Watch out for the black fog around, or malice fog? I don't even know what you'd call this stuff. So just watch out for all of that. Um, unfortunately, I was thinking in my memory that you could have, as long as you had the uh, snow quill set, you would then be impervious to the frost that pops off it, but this is malice instead, so I guess that doesn't really make much difference. Um, however, I think it does make a lot more um, attacks than it does when it's not corrupted like this. Anyways, once you finally destroy all of the eyeballs, then this will then purify Nadra and returns it to normal. So with that easy battle complete, we will then be teleported back to the top of Mount Lanayru, which is nice so we don't have to climb all the way back up there. Now, next, the goddess statue there will tell you that in order to complete the purification process, we need to shoot Nadra with an arrow, and this just seems mean to me. Like, it seems like it's happy enough. I don't know, so why is this necessary? But this is a very Japanese-y thing because they have, like, this whole theme of arrows being sacred or something like that, or using priesty powers or whatever to purify things. It's a very Japanese-y thing to do right here. But anyways, um, you definitely want to shoot Nadra because what this will do is it will make a Nadra scale appear, regardless of which body part you actually hit, which is kind of sad because horns are a lot more valuable. Now, as I was explaining earlier on in this video, we actually need several different... We need a couple scales from all of the dragons. You need one of each, except for Nadra. That's the only exception you need two dragon scales, nature scales, in order to get all the things. So this one is given to us for free, or like it's they kind of shove it down our throats a little bit. However, just as a comment, I think that if you, after you like complete that battle, if you just leave, I think Nadra is is gone at that point. I'm actually not 100% sure. So anyways, um, you do want to definitely shoot Nadra. So this will give you a nature scale. What you want to do is you want to pick it up and then drop it on the platform just ahead. I don't know why we have to move it. I guess this is just a tutorial, but drop the nature scale on the platform that's in the water right in front of the goddess statue. And what this will do is it will open up the nearby shrine. This is really great because it gives us a teleport point here and it also just gives us a free spirit orb, which is awesome. So this particular scale, they kind of just shoved down our throats. We're giving it for free. Um, again, I'm not sure if Nadra will disappear um, after, like if you don't shoot him, I don't know if he'll just start traveling around and uh, like normal or if he, she will just hang out on the uh, on the mountain itself until they're shot. So I'm not actually sure how that works if you neglect to shoot them right now. Um, I don't know why anybody would do that. I guess if they just like button mashed through the uh, dialogue with the goddess statue and wasn't paying attention, I suppose. I'm like, no, I, I don't want to shoot them. They're all happy now, you know. I can see how somebody could possibly do that. Anyways, you want to shoot them, get the free scale, use it on the platform to open up the shrine, go inside. This chest has a frost spear. Now, as a quick comment, this one's very easy to get. You can like warp here and open this chest very quickly. So if you don't want to grab this right now, it might be better actually to, to not open it on purpose and then open it later once you're planning on doing a bunch of Death Mountain stuff because it's just so fast and easy to get. You can get a bunch of other frost spears other locations, but you have to fight enemies to get them. So if you, if you like frost spears, specifically spears as opposed to something else, then um, maybe it would be worth hanging up, like not getting this just yet until you are ready to go to a location where it would be more useful. 
just as a quick comment. But yes, as a reminder, if you're planning on upgrading these snow boots, we're gonna need one more scale, so just keep that in mind for later. But uh, we have opened up this shrine, which is great, and the other springs also require a uh, scale of Farosh and a scale of uh, Dinral, which I will be showing later on in this video. All right, so now that we've done that, I'm gonna show you the best places to farm for Nadra parts. And now, real quick, along the way though, I'm gonna pass through Nadra Snowfield, and along the way, I'm gonna get a bunch of enemies just working my way down uh, Mount Lanayru a little bit, just because because there's a bunch of enemies along the way. This is a fairly nice spot to go ahead and get a bunch of luminous stone, you know, and all those other things I talked about earlier, the gourmet meat from the wolves, the icy keys wings, the icy breathless alphos tails. Uh, you can kill the chews if you want to, those are not as important. But anyways, you just get a nice little chunk of stuff here pretty easily as long as we're passing through. So I like to grab it real quick, at least right here, because we might as well. It doesn't, it takes very little effort and we're getting some ingredients that are kind of hard to find. So I like doing this every blood moon, just kind of running through here and grabbing this stuff. Now I've talked about this before, but but if you're wanting to make heat resistant dishes, then chill shrooms are overall the most economical. They're the easiest to acquire and stuff. And the best place to get chill shrooms in the entire game is definitely right here in Nature Snowfield. There are so many of them. And pretty much most of the only enemies that are here are going to be a bunch of icy Lizalfos, which you can kill them instantaneously with a fire weapon. And also, like because I have the snow quill outfit, we're completely impervious to their icy attacks anyway. So it's kind of like this area is not a threat at all anymore. In fact, the uh, same thing with the icy chews, you know, those white chew chews will only, they do an icy attack, but other than that, they just do the regular chew physical attack, which is like a quarter heart or less. But we have so much armor at this point, they don't really hurt us. So it's like just about all the enemies here only do a quarter heart of damage now that I have an upgraded snow quill set. So it's like, it's nothing. Um, so anyways, this area is not a threat at all. So it was really scary earlier in the game, but now that we have this armor, it's it's like a piece of cake. We can just run through here with a fire weapon, kill everything, get a bunch of chill shrooms, it's wonderful. So that is, this is a potential alternative to, um, especially if you come back here multiple blood moons or whatever, you get enough chill shrooms to make so much duration of heat resistance that you don't need to spend a bunch of money on the uh, bow set if you don't want to. If you're trying to save rupees, this would be a good way to do that. Just come through here every once in a while. You just warp to the top of Mount Lanayru and then sail down to Nature Snowfields and just grab a bunch of chill shrooms and you're good to go. Now, once you finally go far enough west, you will eventually reach the uh, Purifier Lake area. And then from here, if you continue on, there's a uh, line all around here. So you can sneak around it to get to the gate that's further to the west, which is our destination. Kill the Lionel if you want to. I don't think it's worth our time. But anyways, otherwise you can just sail here. So if you did go to the shrine, if you didn't go through Nature Snowfields to get chill shrooms instead, you can just sail here directly and then you can land, you'll land right around the gate, which is our destination. Now, in order to spawn Nadra, we need to use a campfire and it can't be raining. This spot is a really good place because this is a guaranteed spot where Nadra will spawn and we have this overhang of the gate itself. So you can place a campfire right here, even if it's raining, and this will allow you to change the time of day really easily. Again, remember to change it to noon and then morning and this will force Nadra to spawn. So it will appear over on Mount Lanayru and it will steadily work its way this way. This is one of the slower dragons, so it does take a little bit to get here. What you want to do is just get on top of one of the nearby hills and then just shoot it from there. You can jump off. If you get up high enough, you can jump off and then use the bullet time to make it a little easier. So it doesn't have to be that far away. Now again, remember that you just want to shoot um, anywhere on the body. If you shoot the body, you get a scale, which we do need one to upgrade these snow boots. Otherwise, you want to shoot the horns. We're going to need two horns in order to upgrade the champion's tunic. Don't bother with this one for getting horns in order to cook with. You much better off doing the Farosh horns for that because that dragon is a lot easier to farm because you can get the horns way faster. So that being said, we want two horns and one scale to get all the upgrades we need for this in the game. So there's a couple different places where you can farm for Nadra. However, I think this is overall the most reliable. You can easily guarantee that you'll get parts. You can use a campfire. It's just great. Um, it does take a little while. There's a little bit of waiting involved, but it's not too bad. Um, the one problem with this is that it, the parts are probably the most awkward out of all the dragons to get because they land really far away and sometimes they land like really far to the west even though you shot them here it's like the part's like pew and it goes so far to the west and it lands somewhere like on the sides of this canyon and it can land like really hard out of your way also it tends to rain here often so that can make it awkward for climbing around here because if you end up getting pretty low in elevation then it's hard to get back up it's up to you to decide if you want to go ahead and just attack nature repeatedly and then make a whole bunch of parts appear and then gather them all at once or if you want to get the parts directly i feel like overall i'm more in favor of getting the parts directly because they they appear so far away and such that I feel like I just end up forgetting where they are. I'm not entirely sure. And then I end up only getting a couple parts. So I'm like, yay, I got two horns. And then I find one that I can't find the other one. So I feel like I would recommend just going to them directly every time, even though it's tedious and it's annoying. We only need two horns and one scale in order to get all of the upgrades in the game for this particular dragon. So if you just do this, you run and go get the part. Then what you can do is it's actually not too bad. You just sail to the north and then that whole roadway, you can then just summon your horse and go all the way back to the gate, which is great. 
All right, so one more location where you can farm nature that's a little bit faster as a potential option, a little bit more awkward, but it works really good, is just to the west of that same gate, there is Lanayru Heights. And then just west of that, there's this little area, it's unnamed, uh, it's hard to explain, but right here, you can then place a campfire and then light it on fire. And while looking towards Death Mountain, Again, sleep till noon and then morning. This forces a 24-hour... I did only did morning in this recording, but noon, morning. This forces nature to spawn. And as long as you're looking towards Death Mountain when you do it, then um, that... I don't know why looking matters in this particular case, but then go back south and nature will be just around the corner. Very similar to when you spawn um, Dinral at the uh, bridge. Very similar to that, but she's a lot closer, actually. So very close, and you can get nature parts very quickly. Now, this is still not as fast as Farosh in general, but if you're going to be hunting nature, this is pretty awesome. So all you want to do is use the um, the glider once the dragon gets close enough because you have some air geysers just temporarily just for a little bit and you can use that distance to give yourself some air time so that you can shoot at the horn very easily with bullet time which is great now you may want to stank hang around for a little bit just to see where the part's going to fall just roughly before you work your way back towards the campfire also just a quick note you can wear the snow quilt set to give make yourself completely impervious to the ice attacks that come off of nadra Unfortunately, I'm not impervious to nature itself, though, so I did just get mauled by that. Anyways, you can go down and grab the parts if you want to, but otherwise, just running back to the campfire as soon as possible, you can then spawn nature over and over again. The only downside to this particular method is if it rains, then it screws it all up, and you'll have to go back to the gate and use the campfire there in order to change the time of day so you can avoid the weather. So that's the only downside to this, especially if you're going noon morning, because you have to use the campfire repeatedly, and there's a high chance that you can have rain at that point because you're using it both times. But then that guarantees that the dragon's going to spawn, is the reasoning why you do that. Now, as far as the campfire goes, you can just do just morning. However, this tends to break in my experience, so I think noon morning is a little more reliable. However, if you just try mo just morning, then there's a chance that nature will spawn anyways. I don't really quite understand the logic behind this, why sometimes it breaks, sometimes it doesn't. So noon morning is guaranteed to work, is how you do that. Um, anyways, whatever you decide to do there, I'm just going to fast forward through this recording a little bit and show it a couple times. You get the idea of what I'm doing. One quick note as far as pros and cons between this method and the previous one. The previous method, the parts that the dragon, that break off, can potentially drop near the gate, which makes them really easy to grab. You just climb up, you grab them, it's fine. But the problem is, half of the parts end up, as you saw earlier, they travel way over here, which is really annoying and hard to get to and stuff. Um, meanwhile, if you attack the dragon here, they only appear over here. Now, one comment about that is, one thing I've noticed is if you attack nature here, the parts don't travel very far. In fact, they just kind of land right on the ground nearby. Like, they hardly travel at all. So all of the parts that appear will be really tight and compact together. Meanwhile, the previous method, the parts are all over the place. The amount of time you spend gathering the parts with the previous method is typically worse. They're all over the place and you have to travel and you're not sure where they are. This method, at least, it's a little bit more obvious about where they land, so it makes them easier to collect in that sense, but also it takes less time because they're much tighter together, if that makes sense. Um, also, another thing you can do, too, is you can place pins on your map, just the color pins real quick, if you see roughly where the uh, shards are going to land. So it makes it a little bit easier to collect in that sense as well. So yeah, I have to dock points due to the uh, rain factor. So I think I would overall vote this as just real nice is my vote for this. It's pretty good. Not amazing, but good. And my recommendation would be to hang out here once you get this set up and you're running back and forth. Just do it until it rains. And once it finally rains, now you can run around and collect all of the parts. So I hung out here for a little while. I'm actually going to cut out some of the recordings here because I don't want to waste your guys' time. But I did farm a little bit more at the gate itself and also over here on this hillside just to practice and kind of show it a little bit better. So anyways, I'm cutting out all the additional recordings, but you get the idea of what I'm doing here. So I hung out here for a little while. Once it finally rained, I ran around and gathered some of the parts. I'm, again, I'm not going to show all of them. I did go back and forth and like it rained and I changed the time of day at the gate and then I came back here and tried it again. So I went back and forth a couple times, but I'm not going to bother showing all that stuff. I'm going to crop it all out. So that is all of the dragon farming methods for all three dragons. So I showed them all in this video. That's great. So for the remaining parts of this video, I'm going to show some of the memories and shrines nearby that are related to the dragon. So the shrine of courage, the shrine of power, and also the related uh, memories that are nearby. So for Nadra, there is a memory nearby, and that is just to the west of the gate. So if you haven't gotten it yet, I'd highly recommend you do it now since we're in the area. So just hop on your horse along Lanera Road, go back towards the gate um, to the east, you know, in between Lanera Road and uh, Nadra Snowfields, and there is a memory just to the west of the gate, so be sure to interact with that and collect that as long as we're here. Well, 
Don't keep us in suspense. How'd everything go up there on the mountain? <sighs> so you didn't feel anything? No power at all? I'm sorry, no. Then let's move on. You've done all you could. Feeling sorry for yourself won't be of any help. After all, it's not like your last shot was up there on Mount Lanayru. Anything could finally spark the power to seal Ganon away. We just have to keep looking for that... thing. That's kind of you. Thank you. If I may... I thought you... Well, I'm not sure how to put this into words. I'm actually quite embarrassed to say it. But I was thinking about what I do when I'm healing. You know, what usually goes through my mind. It helps when I think... when I think about... Wasting time. We're gonna need everything we got to take that thing down. Now, champions, to your divine beasts, show that swirling swine who's boss. Link will need to meet Ganon head on when we attack. This needs to be a unified assault. Little guy, you get to Hyrule Castle. You can count on us for support, but it's up to you to pound Ganon into oblivion. Come, we should go. We need to get you someplace safe. No. I'm not a child anymore. I may not be much use on the battlefield. But there must... There must be something I can do to help. So next, we're going to work our way over to the Tavios Hollow uh, Canyon area where we can find a DLC armor. This is one of the more useful ones, although depending on what you're doing, it may or may not be useful, but I'll be talking about it here in a little bit. Now, as a quick disclaimer, this is only available if you have the DLC, and I'm going to head there now that I have access to the show to Sa Shrine, so I can swing down over here, use the Zora armor to go up the waterfall, and then work my way north until I get to Tavios Hollow. Now, a better way to get there would be to take the Shi Veneer Shrine. I don't have access to that currently in this particular playthrough. I will be getting that here in a little while. Um, but I just haven't done it yet. So that would be the fastest way. You just warp there and go south and get to Tobio's Hollow really easily. Otherwise, you can also use the Dueling Peaks Tower, which I will be showing here in a little bit. So once you finally arrive in Tobio's Hollow, there is a pool that is to the north side of it, and it's actually all mud, so you'll sink in it if you land in it. So what you want to do is you want to sail from above and then land on the leftmost island, and there's two trees there, and in between it, you can use the Magnesis Rune to pull up a DLC-only chest that contains the Zant's Helmet, which gives you has three armor, it's not upgradable, and it gives you the unfreezable buff, which makes it so that you cannot take any damage from frost attacks at all. Now, one quick distinction about that, though, is that there's a difference between frost attacks and cold resistance. Those are two completely different things. So this will make it so that frost enemies can't hurt you with their frost attacks, but you do still need to figure out something to uh, have cold resistance, because any place where there's frost enemies, you also need cold resistance as well. So basically the best combination with this particular helmet would be if you're going to give yourself cold resistance with food. So frying up a bunch of sun shrooms or getting like a warm butterfly and a bunch of, uh, you know, monster parts to give yourself like a 13 plus minute elixir would be pretty good um, because that would last a very long time. And you have that in combination with a fire weapon, you get tier two cold resistance and that'd be fine. <laughs> now, one of the reasons why that's kind of cool is because then you can ignore getting the snow quill set entirely. You don't have to worry about it. One of the reasons that's kind of nice is because then your your total armor sets in there are fewer and you don't have to scroll past them all the time. So that's kind of nice. I don't actually think the snow quill set is that much of a problem though. Like one of the funny things about that is like if you're wearing the Zant's helmet, you can't upgrade it. To get a lot of armor, like ideally you'd wear something like say the champion's tunic, which 
which is awesome, has a bunch of armor on it, right? The problem is that in order to upgrade the champion's tunic, you need a bunch of dragon parts. But if you already have access to a bunch of dragon parts like I'm doing, you should be able to make a bunch of rupees. And if you have a bunch of rupees, you can just go ahead and get the snow cool set, which makes the Zant's helmet kind of worthless. So anyways, it depends on what you're going to do. If you're going to use the Zant's helmet, I think it makes more sense with, in combination with food buffs. But it just depends on what you want to do. And the advantage of getting the full snow cool set is then you can focus your food buffs on something else like damage or armor or something. You know what I mean? There's other buffs you could get or speed, whatever. And then that's awesome for especially for Va Meadow or for going through Heber or whatever. So it just depends on what you want to do. If you're doing like a speed runny, like a minimalist -y running through kind of thing, Zant's helmet can be kind of nice because it can give you just some extra survivability, especially when you don't have a lot of hearts, then like those Icy Breathless Outposts are nowhere near as scary because they can't freeze you and you don't have to worry about it. Now, as an alternative to get to Tobio's Hollow, as I was, I was talking about earlier, you can also come from the Shivanir Shrine, which I don't have access to just yet, or the Dueling Peaks Tower, which is what I'm showing in this particular video. It's pretty easy. You just climb up the nearby hill and then work your way south. So that's one way to get there. Now, in this particular recording, what I'm doing now is I'm heading to the Spring of Courage. Now that we have a Farosh scale, we can now access that. Now, one quick note, if you're going to come from this direction, um, which is kind of nice, if you don't have shock resistance, I'd recommend this method. One of the perks of coming this way is because we can then get all of the luminous stone that is on the upper hill just to the right of Dracozu Lake. This whole cliffside here has a whole bunch of luminous stone, which is pretty nice. So I think it's actually one of the better places to get it in the game because there's very high concentration of it. Um, it can be a little awkward to climb around here because it rains often, but there's a big chunk of it. So I like to, if I'm going to Dracozu Lake, I like to come from this direction because I can get all this luminous stone along the way. Now, otherwise, you can also come from the shrines to the south or from the Faron Tower and then work your way north. Um, one of the advantages of this, well, advantage or disadvantage, depending on what you got, I guess, is there's a bunch of yellow Lazalfos here in Dracozu Lake area. There's a couple encampments that have three of them apiece, and so you can get a bunch of yellow Lazalfos tails, which is very useful for upgrading the rubber set. Unfortunately, I don't have the rubber set right now, so I can't, um, I, I don't have shock resistance unless I want to use potions. So if you want to eat a some shock resistance food, you can do so to make yourself impervious to these guys, and you might want to kill them as long as we're in the area because that's pretty valuable. So once you finally arrive at Chakrozu Lake, then to the north you'll see that there is a dragon head that is part of the architecture here, and there are two giant claws that are on either side of it. So if you're facing towards it on the left side, which is the dragon's right claw, then underneath the claw itself, there is a DLC chest. So if you have the DLC, you can then grab this, and this particular one contains Ravio's hood. Now this is a really weird one. I think this one's pretty garbage. What it does is it makes it so that you have full climbing speed when you're climbing horizontally. So you'll use less stamina and you'll travel really fast, which is nice. Um, but just so you know, this is the same speed as wearing the full climbing set. So if you have the climbing gear, I'd recommend that overall because it's significantly better. Ravio's hood is just so situational, I don't know. And meanwhile, the climbing set works at full speed in all directions and not just horizontal. So I think this particular armor piece is just not very useful. Most of the time when you're climbing, you're only going up anyways. Like you're not usually climbing side to side. That doesn't happen very often. So I just feel like it's not all that great. So after you've acquired that, you can go underneath the dragon head where you'll find a, the goddess statue. Now, just like we did with the Spring of Wisdom, you want to place a Farosh scale here on top of the platform right in front of the goddess statue. This will open up the nearby doorway, which gives us access to the Sheikatha Shrine. Now, just so you know, by the way, the quest that led to us uh, knowing the location of this is by speaking with Cass over at Pagos Woods, right next to the bridge just south of Zonai Ruins, is how you know how to do this. But yes, so we're going to use the... Farosh scale to open up the shrine. This will allow us to warp here whenever we want. This is really nice because this is a nice place to get a bunch of yellow Lozalpos tails in particular. You can just go just south of here and it's really easy to do so. Now just so you know, inside this particular shrine there is a chest containing a Thunder Spear. I do like these a lot for um, getting weapons from enemies. So one thing you can do with this too is like rather than getting it right now, you could always save this for later and then use it to like for example, steal all the um, weapons off of the enemies inside the Colosseum Ruins, for example, later on once they all have elemental weapons. And this particular item makes that really easy because you can run up to them and you stab them so fast before they can react and then that way you can get everything from them. It's super nice. So once you complete this shrine, then you want to head over to East Akala Stable, which is probably the fastest way to get to the Spring of Power. Now, just so you know, you can speak with Nobo optionally here at East Akala Stable. He's usually outside, like, sitting at the campfires during the day when it's not raining. So if you speak with him, he'll then give you an ask about the uh, surrounding area, then he will give you the shrine quest for the Spring of Power. So um, you don't have to do that, though. It's totally optional. The quest will be completed automatically once you arrive. So just like with Cass, so speaking with him is optional. Speaking with Nobo here at East Akala Staple is optional as well. Anyways, that is the breadcrumb trail that leads to this location. So it is just west of East Akala Staple, and it's down like at the bottom of this ravine. So just 
Head over there if you got a horse, then ride that over there. It's very easy. There's a couple enemies along the way, but all you have to do is just dive down into the canyon. I think there's actually like an outer area where I, I guess they're trying to like expecting you to come from the other direction too, but just dropping down right into it is the easiest way by far. So just like with the other shrines we've used so far, or the other springs, you want to place a Dinral scale on the platform in front of the goddess statue here at the Spring of Power. This will then unlock the Tetsuwa Nima Shrine. Now, unlike the previous two shrines, this one is actually a test of strength instead of just a blessing, so we don't just get all our stuff automatically. You have to actually fight some enemies. Now, one thing that's interesting about this shrine, though, is that there are no pillars. Instead, you have to make pillars yourself by using the water. So use Cryonis to make blocks, and this, you can use this in particular if the enemy is going to like start doing that spinny move towards you. So you just want to use Cryonis blocks to prevent it from doing so. I suppose the reason this is a test of strength is because it's the power one, that's why it's related to that, that's the element that it's associated with, so go ahead and kill that. I'm not going to bother showing this gameplay because you've already seen these tons of times. But anyways, the uh, chest at the end does have a flame spear, so there's the elemental spirit, each one of them, a different element for each one. So fire for the power one, which makes sense. So go ahead and grab that if you like, and then talk to the old bro to get our orb. Now one last thing to do with the Spring of Power before you depart is just south of the uh, goddess statue itself, there is a platform here where there is a sparkly, so go ahead and interact with this shaft of light to cause Link to have another memory. I come seeking help regarding this power that has been handed down over time. Prayer will awaken my power to seal Ganon away. Or so I've been told all my life. And yet... Grandmother heard them, the voices from the spirit realm, and Mother said her own power would develop within me. But I don't hear or feel anything. Father has told me time and time again, he always says, quit wasting your time playing at being a scholar. Curse you. I've spent every day of my life dedicated to praying. I've pleaded to the spirits tied to the ancient gods. And still the holy powers have proven deaf to my devotion. Please, just tell me. What is it? What's wrong with me? So before you leave, there is a nearby Korok you can grab that's pretty easy, but otherwise, the thing I want to point out is that the entrance to the uh, Shrine of Power is here to the south, through this little hallway, and there is this leafy barrier that's blocking the way that makes it kind of hidden from the other side, so you can't really see it from the south so well, but you can see it very easily from this side, and it feel like it's the way it's designed, it kind of makes it feel like you kind of... I mean, I think everybody dropped in from above, right? Like, you're exploring out in the fields on your horse, and you're like, ooh, a giant pit, let's explore it, or it's just so obvious on your map that it makes you want to check it out. Or, like, the, you, know, you get the pin for the quest, and then it takes you here, and same thing, you come from the top. I don't think anybody came from the south. And there's, like, uh, some of these Sky Guardians there, too, so I feel like people would just avoid them naturally, and, like, unless you're hunting them specifically. There's no reason to go there. So it just feels like, oh, I discovered this entrance, like, backwards, and it's all cool, and I just think it's an interesting choice, especially because these... Um, these grassy barriers are so few and far between. There's only a couple of them in the game, and I feel like this is a very tasteful, artistic choice for Nintendo to put it here. All right, so now that we have tons of dragon parts, we can finally upgrade our champion's tunic, as well as a bunch of our other armors, now that we can sell dragon parts for money. So it gives us access to a whole bunch of new things that we can do here, which I'm going to be showing you how to do in the next video. If you enjoyed this one and found it helpful, be sure to throw a like on it and subscribe for more content just like this. Remember to stay awesome, you have an amazing day, and I'll see you next time.